the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let's now take a few moments for silent private confession. <coughs> Almighty God, in his mercy, he has given his son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of Christ, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord.
On this is day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in this holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our students. Sunday comes from the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them, from there over the face of the whole earth, and they left off their building of the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join with me now as we read together the gradual. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. With the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Our second reading comes from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And after the sound, the multitude came together. And they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it? that we hear, each of us, in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Lib Lib Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongue the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with wine. 
But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
wanted to be in the choir. And sure enough, well, we had that before, remember? Remember? Okay. Thank you, we've got another choir member. That's it. I'm put that in the count. She has a powerful voice, just like her mom.
God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, of course, is Pentecost Sunday, and it is a major festival in the church year. That first Pentecost is regarded uh, for many as the beginning or the birthday of the church. Because through the gospel that was preached that morning, the Holy Spirit brought 3,000 people to faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And then the Holy Spirit scattered the gospel that he had planted in their hearts so that when they went back home to wherever they were throughout the Roman Empire, they would tell people what they had seen and what they had heard and what they had experienced on that day of Pentecost. And I think that partly explains why the church spread so exponentially and grew so quickly, because when Paul and Peter and the other apostles and other disciples went around the empire proclaiming Christ as the crucified and risen Lord, the church grew so quickly in those early days. But unfortunately, I also think that's why the church has not grown in recent days. Because congregations, individuals, have failed to share that good news, that seed that the Holy Spirit planted in our hearts. So that those who heard that, hear that word, faith could also be planted in their hearts. That's why the Holy Spirit gathers us together every Sunday, to plant those seeds in our hearts. And that's why he has gathered us here today, that through his word and through the sacrament, the Holy Spirit could uh, continue to nurture us in the true faith. And that we could experience him not like those people did on that first Pentecost, but we could experience him in a very concrete and personal way. Now I'm sure that you've noticed that the liturgical colors for Pentecost is red. And I looked it up and I believe it is the only Sunday in the church year in which red is used except for other special occasions. So this morning, I would like us to consider why red is appropriate for Pentecost. First of all, red is the color of love. And throughout the Old Testament, God's faithful people trusted in his steadfast love. You can see that throughout the Old Testament his steadfast love toward us. And that assured them that he would not abandon them, he would protect them from their enemies, and that he would also provide and watch over them as a shepherd looks after his flock. And that was especially meaningful to them when they realized that they had turned away from the Lord, that they sinned against the Lord, that they failed to love him with all of our, their hearts and minds and souls and their neighbors as themselves. In our gospel reading for today, Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. We can also say in him. The Holy Spirit, who the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. 
Red is appropriate for Pentecost because through his word and through the Holy Sacraments, the Holy Spirit is bringing to our remembrance our Heavenly Father's steadfast love and faithfulness toward us, especially by sending his son Jesus into this world to die on that cross and to redeem us from our sins. That's why Jesus said, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, so that we do never ever have to be troubled or afraid of anyone, and we certainly don't have to be troubled or afraid of our Heavenly Father, because He loves us unconditionally, even when we fail to love Him and to love our neighbors as ourselves because of his steadfast love for us. Second of all, red is the color of fire. Now in the Old Testament, fire was often used to symbolize God's anger against sin. Like when he rained down fire and destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And when Prophets, like we heard earlier, Joel talked about the final judgment as God's coming with fire. But fire also symbolized a holy fire, God's holy fire, as he continued to refine and he continued to purify his people, uh, as he did when they were in the wilderness with their trials and their temptations, and they experience them to learn to trust in the steadfast love and forgiveness of their God. And the fire was also used to symbolize his presence, like when he appeared to Moses in that burning bush and commissioned him to go and to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. Or when they were in the wilderness at the tent of meeting and, and God appeared there in a column of fire and spoke to uh, Moses face to face. And especially on Mount Sinai when God delivered the Ten Commandments and his covenant to his people and there was fire and vapor and smoke. And also as he led them through that wilderness with a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. In the New Testament, when John was asked, John the Baptist was asked, are you the Christ? He said that he wasn't. And he said, he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie or carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And just before he ascended into heaven, Jesus said to his disciples, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, Jesus could have added the Spirit and with fire, because according to our uh, epistle lesson for today, when the day of Pentecost arrived, suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided as tongues as of fire that appeared to them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Likewise, in our baptisms, we have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not with tongues of fire like that first Pentecost, but rather with simple water and with God's promise of his steadfast love for us and the gift of eternal life. And that water and that word is just as powerful as those tongues 
on that first Pentecost. Because in our baptisms, our Heavenly Father adopted us into his family. And he gave us, poured out his Holy Spirit upon us and created faith in our hearts. And throughout our lives, that Holy Spirit keeps refining us and renewing us into the image of our Lord Jesus. And then thirdly, red is the color of blood. And we all know that blood is vital for life, right? You lose too much blood, and what's going to happen? You're going to die. And that's why to our Heavenly Father, blood is precious. All life is precious and sacred to him. In the Garden of Eden, God told Adam and Eve, if they ate that forbidden fruit, they would die. And they ate it, right? And that's why sin came into this world and death came into this world. But because of our Heavenly Father's grace and mercy, what did he do? He sacrificed an animal to take their place and covered their nakedness and covered their shame and guilt with the skin of that sacrificed animal. And later on, he instituted a sacrificial substitution system whereby his people could receive the forgiveness of their sins when they repented and through the shedding of blood of a sacrifice of an animal. But those animals only pointed ahead to the one true sacrifice, that once for all sacrifice that Jesus would make on our behalf. And that is why the author to the Hebrews wrote, but in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin every year, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. So above all, that red reminds us that Jesus shed his blood on that cross as the price, as the redemption for our sins, and as the pure and innocent Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and reconciles us to our Heavenly Father and gives us the gift of eternal life. And that red blood also symbolizes the martyrs, the martyrs, those believers who willingly suffer and sacrifice their lives rather than to deny Jesus as the Savior of the world. And that's why the other times that we have read is when we have the uh, special feast days of the saints. Because it reminds us that they were willing, and many who suffered and did die for their faith in Jesus. And that's why we also wear red on uh, the installation, right? And ordination of pastors who have been called, who have received special gifts from the Holy Spirit to shepherd a flock and to use their gifts to train and equip their congregations to be witnesses for Jesus. And that is because that Greek word there for martyrs literally means to be a witness, to give a testimony of faith to willingly suffer for our cause. And our cause is Jesus and his gospel. 
And that is exactly what those apostles did after that first Pentecost. They gave their lives in order to testify about the crucified, risen, and glorified Lord Jesus. And countless disciples after them did the same thing and shared that very same message. So in a sense, pastors witness, testify, and yes, maybe even sometimes suffer as they preach and teach and mentor their flocks whom they have been called to care for in Jesus' name and with his authority. And that is especially meaningful for us this morning on this Pentecost because after the service, we are going to have a call service. And we are going to elect someone who we believe that the Holy, that God, the Father, has chosen to be the next regular pastor of this congregation. And we're going to be praying, and I hope we've been, really been doing that for the last, throughout this process in the last couple of weeks, we're going to be praying for the Holy Spirit to guide our selection. And then the pastor who we call, so that if he accepts, then truly he is the person that the Heavenly Father has chosen for us. So on this Pentecost Sunday, we have lots to be thankful for. We have lots uh, to be thankful for the Holy Spirit guiding our call committee and the members of the call committee and bringing us to this point where we will have that call service. And as I said, hopefully the pastor we call will accept and become the next pastor of our congregation. But we also have the assurance that no matter what happens in this world, uh, in spite of all the moral degradation that we see all around us and death we see all around us and in spite of the persecution that the church is going to receive and continue to receive the holy spirit is going to continue to call to gather and to enlighten us and keep us in that one true faith and the holy spirit is going to continue to grow the church until Jesus returns again in glory. And if you read the Old Testament, in that last day, when Jesus returns, I am sure there's going to be a lot of heavenly fireworks proclaiming Jesus as Lord of all. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his precious name we pray, now and always. Amen. I ask you now, if you are able, to please rise and we'll profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed.
who is spoken by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We'll gather together our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. Forget not the sick and the suffering. 
Grant them healing according to your will. Especially do we lift up to your throne of grace James and Amy, Chip and Martha, Stella, Faith, Matt, Pam, Carrie, Diantha, Carl, Tammy, Jamie, Lou, Mary Lou, Jenna, Butch, Jason, Dawn, Judy, Michael, Porter family, Matthew, Terry, Grace, John, Tony, Paul, Tom, the Woodard family, Pat, Julia, Neon, Ted, Cindy, Janet, Ed, Susan, Kathy, James, and Patty. We especially ask your blessings upon the family and friends of Sue Minton's brother, William, who went to be with Jesus this past week. And we pray that you give them the comfort and the consolation that only you can give through the Holy Spirit. And we ask your special blessings upon Thomas as he continues to fight with cancer. And we pray that your healing hand be upon him and upon all who are afflicted with your grace and your love. Give them all the confidence that you know their needs and will supply them with all that they need to endure to the day of your coming, when all affliction will end and you will grant the perfect consolation to us and to all who have loved your appearing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of grace, your Son has come among us and giveth us the privilege of a place at his table. Prepare us to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith for our good and for the flowering in our lives of your holiness and righteousness. Nourish and feed us that in this holy communion we may be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune and defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after they had eaten, and after he gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink of this cup, all of you. Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And the Holy Spirit on this Pentecost has gathered us here together so that we may remember everything that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us in order for us to have eternal life by shedding his blood on that cross to wash away all of our sins and to assure us of eternal life through faith in him as our Savior. And he gives himself to us in this very special way so that we can experience his love for us in a very concrete and personal way. So that as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen.
Now may the true body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, the life everlasting, the part of his love and his grace.
now may the true body of love, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting, upon in his love and his grace through the power of his Holy Spirit. <laughs> Savior, again to thy dear name we raise. 